Hey guys, today I'll be showing you something a little bit different here. I uh, thought you guys might enjoy this. I'm actually working on my ARP Selena, or Eminent Selena. And uh, just going to show you what's inside this thing and kind of how it works. I thought you might like this. Because I don't know if there's too many videos out there showing what's actually inside the Selena. It's kind of a magical string machine uh, to a lot of people. And uh, just going to kind of break it down for you. I'll also be showing you the similarities between this and the Omni. Uh, the Omni and this thing are very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, this is a little bit more complex because it was earlier, and I think some of the circuitry design that ARP did later on uh, kind of cleaned some of this up because this was not an ARP product, guys, just so you know. This was actually made by Eminent. Um, so here's the story behind the Eminent. Um, Eminent was a Holland-based company, and from what I understand, ARP was a distributor of these. So what ARP did is when they get these things in from Eminent, they'd stick their cheesy stickers on it so it looked like an ARP. So they'd put the ARP badge on it and market these things as the ARP Selena. That's kind of how that worked. But if you look at the back, anywhere on the tagging or badging, it's going to say Eminent Company and it'll say Selena. What's also interesting about these things is that you could pull these stickers off on these earlier units. I don't know about later ones. I'm not that familiar with all the changes in these. I mostly work with Moogs. But you could actually pull these stickers off and it would actually have screen printed string ensemble on the board in really nice font. Similar to this font, but it just looked really nice. You'd pull the sticker off down here and it'd actually say Selena screen printed on the interface board. So that just goes to show you that ARP would just stick these stickers on there and it's an ARP basically at that point. And that's how they marketed these things. So in my opinion, the Omni was actually when ARP decided to rechange or redesign some of it to make it their own instrument. And of course they actually added the VCL and that kind of stuff as well to it. Just to give it a little bit more, you know, control. Uh, but like I say, there are some changes in there, and I think for that reason there are some things that sound different between this and the, and the actual Omni. So let me walk around back here and I'll show you what's inside this thing. We'll start just by showing you the inside guts of this thing. So first of all, you can see it's got a metal frame. It's actually a really nice metal frame, all welded joints. Uh, tack welded primarily. It ain't actually like full weld. That would be kind of ridiculous. So we just tack weld all this together. Uh, but it's got a nice metal chassis. One reason it's so heavy, because this is all a metal design here. Um, as you can see, this is your lower boards. And what's really cool about this instrument is that they actually hinged the the framework that they mounted the boards to. So you can see all the boards are mounted to this frame that's actually hinged and so you can pull this board down if you need to service something. Same thing to this other layer. You can pull it down and work on it. So it's actually a really really clean design as far as that goes. Um, now the circuit board material is a different story. I don't like working with this kind of material because it's easy to damage tracings. It's easy to disintegrate them. And it's actually these boards are, are prone to crack. Now the way they're mounted in this particular case, they're mounted well enough I don't think they would crack, but like Roland used this kind of material board and like their RS series or um, might be might be wrong here. It's it's their string machines that they made back early on and they use the same board and they put it in a wood chassis and it'd flop around and it'd crack and you couldn't keep tracing soldered and just a mess. But these are actually mounted well enough I don't think that they were that bad about cracking because there's plenty of support. And plus the boards are really short, where Roland would use this big old giant board and it would flex. I mean, it would just basically just bounce around inside the chassis. Um, but uh, anyways, what we got here, I'm going to just go over how this thing works. So we're going to start at this end because this is actually where it all starts. This is your master oscillator. So it's inductive style oscillator, like what you find in the Omni. That means it uses inductor that's got an adjustable core. So you can actually adjust the inductance, which changes the frequency. That's how you actually would calibrate the uh, the uh, the main frequency of the instrument. Um, a lot of organs use this kind of technology back in the day. Um, string machines, other string machines use this, including the Omni. Uh, so this wasn't really a voltage-controlled oscillator, like what you think of with like what Moog would do with their division networks. Um, so basically, it has a frequency come out here. It clocks the top octave synthesizer chip here, which gives you your highest, highest frequency notes. Now, it may not be the actual notes you hear, but it's the highest frequency that it can produce, and then it's divided down through these two boards here. 
And so these boards here actually have the dividers, early dividers, with uh, wave shaping circuits, which are basically just filters. They kind of filter that square wave into kind of a, a odd looking um, sawtooth wave. Not exactly sawtooth, but pretty close. Um, so then it comes out of this board, it goes up to this board here. This is your, your uh, actual keyer circuitry. And what we have here is we have uh, gates, not gated dividers, like what you find in the Opus 3, which you've heard me talk about. This is actually just gated circuits. So it's a set of transistors in there that are controlled by the controller. Uh, you got a, a tech capacitor and then your release capacitors, which work in hand with these, these chips. But you've also got a VCA, just like in the Opus 3, and uh, some of your string machines, we have sections that come in slower or faster. So this, for example, come in faster. And you got another rate that, that comes in slower, like a crescendo, I think is what they actually call the control. And that's actually controlling a VCA. So you got a VCA in here as well, which gives you the slower attack. So, so you have one part come in, you'll hear another part kind of come in slower, depending on your settings on the interface. So that's kind of how that works. Then we've got this section here, which is your actual chorus. This is actually all the chorus board. You can see how big, how much room it takes up. And it's actually still bucket brigade circuitry. So it's using the 350 wide uh, bucket brigade chips, not the SAD 512s like you find in the Omni. And it's a little bit more complex because you got this board that actually is the control board, which actually modulates and um, sends out the, the phased, the different phase offset modulation points to, to to basically modulate these um, these um, bucket brigade chips and three stages so it's vibrato 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 they mix with different phase uh, phases and that's how you get your cores effect pretty much how that works and then we got the little power supply here really really simple power supply so that's really what's underneath this thing uh, that's that's what makes up this part of it uh, now there's some more boards. I will be flipping this thing up showing you that in a minute. As you can see down here, there's more boards down here. So let me flip this thing up and I'll show you the other boards and what they do. Okay, I got this thing flipped back on its uh, bottom here so I can show you the other boards that are in this thing. So this is called the registry board and what this holds, it holds some of the control circuits, your VCA, um, and that's pretty much what it does and as well as some of the filtering. Uh, so it's like your low pass filtering for your tone structure of the different uh, preset modes up here. That's kind of how that works. And then this is your, your uh, bass uh, circuit here. This is actually the monophonic uh, keyboard circuit, um, as well as your, once again, your contour for your, uh, for your uh, uh, bass, which is, this is like the last, I think like 20 notes, I think the number of the notes this thing supports. And uh, once again, it has your contour as well as another little divider stage there. Uh, for some of the some of the stuff it does, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, that's what's inside one of these things. But you can just kind of see the top side here, the keys. It's got these long keys. Key contacts are back here, and you can see it actually has this little actuation. That's that's interesting. It's got a little piece of plastic that goes down. It has a spring contact, kind of like what you found in Mini Moog. It goes through this little piece of plastic, and basically when you when you hit it, it pulls up on a bus. And actually that was one of the problems this one had. It had a uh, bad spring. One of the springs had actually broken off, so I had to replace one of the springs in it. You didn't have one of the bass notes. You had the polyphonic section worked, but when you actually play the, one of the bass settings, you have one note that wouldn't respond to bass, and it was just a contact missing. So that's uh, that's what's in this thing. That's actually what, what it is. And you can see once again, you know, just the layout of it from the top. Once again, you can see the framework on the back the metal framework. Once again, it's really handy because all you have to do is remove these uh, these bolts here and these bolts over here and this whole panel here will flip down and you can actually work on the boards, which is actually what I'm about to be doing. I'm about to be recapping and taking care of some preventive maintenance in this unit. So that's what's inside this thing. So with that out of the way, I'm going to actually show you the block diagram changes between this and the Omni. So you're going to see a lot of similarities here. Uh, so what we have here is, is we have the actual block diagram of the Selena, and we got the block diagram of the uh, op the Omni. Sorry, keep getting my my names mixed up here. To me, O's, Opus Three Omni. Um, 
So what we have is, once again, you can see exactly what I just showed you in the board layout. You got your master oscillator. You got a little tuning control in this particular unit, which is a CV control, but it's just a very, you know, basic control for basically just setting your uh, fine tuning is what that's for, which is actually something I wish the Omni had. It does not have that. You actually have to go in the bottom and adjust your, your coil, which is not a big deal, but just kind of nice having that on the interface. Go through your divider sets. You got one set of dividers. The uh, sawtooth circuits, which is also on the divider circuit, um, also has a branch off here off the dividers that go down here to your base circuit, which is uh, that bore on the back, and uh, that's where you can see your your uh, low tone select circuit, which would be like your um, you know some of your filtering control, uh, actually whatever button you hit for you know the lower register or higher register because once again you got two registers there of, of footages. Um, you got your uh, control circuit, and you got a low-pass filter on the output right here. So, and that's all in the register board, as you can see, the registry circuit board, and then all this is within that board, as well as uh, your actual gated stuff here. So, sawtooth circuits are inside the dividers. It comes out here, goes to the gates, which is that board, the cure circuit I pulled down. Sustain circuitry, uh, sustain suppressor trigger, all that's in that board that's right above the lowest board underneath. And it comes out here to your registry circuits. Once again, it goes to the gate output circuit, format circuit uh, for your viola, violin, trumpet, horn. Uh, trigger output uh, comes out here, which is actually crescendo control, all that. Uh, goes out here to a voltage control amplifier. This is the amplifier I was telling you about. Goes through a low pass filter and it goes through your actual uh, circuitry here for your modulation of your course. So you've got basically three stages control oscillator, TC350Y, TCA350Y, that's your bucket brigade low pass filter. Once again, that uh, control circuit board, the bigger board beside it, does your uh, basically your modulation for your tremolo and chorus oscillators. So a little pass filter to shape that uh, waveform of that oscillator. Phase shift, uh, another phase shift, inverter, so that's inverted. And that's basically how you get your chorus. Then you got output amplifier, just kind of like a, a buffering amp. And then you got your correction filter uh, there, just kind of helping that tone on the output. And of course your expression uh, input it controls this amplifier. So that's the that's the Selena. So now we go over here. You'll see it's kind of cleaned up. It, it's it's doing pretty much the same stuff. They just kind of cleaned up the the block diagram. And you do have the extra section because you got the synthesizer section here. But once again, master oscillator, top octave divider, which also uh, goes into frequency dividers here. Wave shapes. Once again, you can kind of see that uh, change from a square to the sawtooth waveform. Goes into the gate circuits, four and eight footage. Which basically looking at this right here, this would be uh, right here. So when you look right here, uh, comes out here, there's your 4 and 8, but it's called viola and violin. So here you got 4 and 8 instead of actually being a name. And then you got your base uh, priority circuit, which is the mono synth of this thing, which comes off the wave shapes once again, just like in the, in the Selena. Comes down here to that circuitry, which would make up your base circuit down here. And uh, then out to your phaser, uh, string VCA, uh, string attack release, which is all related to your uh, contours of what this thing is. So very similar there. Just a lot, lot cleaner circuitry. Like I said, use some different chipsets and stuff in order to get all that work. But uh, that's pretty much it. That's how it works. The only difference is here you see it actually uh, is parallel between the uh, phaser and all this. And it comes down here and it's just paralleled signal to the synthesizer section was the VCL, VCA, and ADSR for that little synthesizer section of the uh, Omni. So mix output, because you got a mix amplifier between your uh, string section and, and uh, synthesizer section. And you also got a core switch, which is what you also got on the uh, Selena that allows you to shut on and off, bypass the chorus, basically. So same thing here. You've, you've got one of the switches in this one as well. Um, let's see if I can find it here. I don't know if it's actually shown here. Yeah, right here. The modulation switch is right here. And so basically when you hit it off, it bypasses all this, goes straight to your output amplifier correction filter. So same thing going here. The output mix 
And so that's basically the differences. It's a, it's a very similar architecture in the Omni. Uh, but like I say, it's, it's, it's different because it's a different set of chipsets. It's a different uh, phaser design, because it's, our core is designed because it's using the SAD 512s. But if I'm not mistaken, those uh, 350Ys are very similar, if I'm not mistaken. Um, don't hold me to it. But uh, anyways, guys, I just thought y'all might appreciate a video going over one of these things and just kind of show you the, the complexity of the inside. It's a, it's a very complex uh, machine, but has a beautiful sound. And of course, I'll be making a demo later on showing this one off, showing you how it sounds once it's all finished. So also, just a quick look at the, uh, the way these um, gated circuits work. So the horn and trumpet presets are right off the gates, which is that board I showed you underneath the keyboard, the, the actual keyer circuits. And then the other two presets, which is the, uh, I'm trying to think here, the violin and the uh, viola, are actually off the contoured circuit. They call that the format circuit, the format circuit. And basically what it is, is, is you'll hear that these will come in regardless. So as soon as I hit a note, they're in. But if we play one of these uh, presets that actually goes to the format circuit, you can hear we actually got a control of the attack. As you can hear. So that's the example of the format circuit, which is the contour circuit. Uh, but you'd see, you saw the, the format uh, circuit in the block diagram, that's what that does. So this is just off the gates, those gates, and then this is actually through the gates and into a contour circuit. It's basically what it is. Vowel is the same thing, but you can hear the footage difference. So this is, I think this is four, and this is eight. I'm sorry, eight and four, I believe it would be. Yeah, eight and four. So. Yeah, so that's your that's your, uh, your actual footage change there, but it's going through the format circuit. Now, what's interesting is is both of the gates are they the gates actually share the sustain with the format circuit. So if we turn the, the sustain all the way up, you hear you can hear when you turn that up, and this actually shares that. So. as you can hear. Bring that up together. So then we got our bass section, which if we cut off the presets here and turn on our bass section, and it also shares that format. And here's just a same thing footage, uh, two different footages there. It's got a key stop right here. So this is just your bass section. But you can combine. So when you, whenever you saw that format circuit, I just want to bring that up because I wasn't clear on that format circuit 
and what it did. It's basically just another name for the control. So you got the the uh, attack control, which is not affected by the gates off the off the actual keyers. So keyers direct, and then the format circuit is the control, which has a build up. Put those two together. You've also got a uh, bass mix control, so if we put the bass on. There's all the bass. It's a mono, the bass once again is mono and it plays the lowest note. Um, you say I can play the notes lowest, but if I try to play a note higher, Just want to bring that up in a little uh, quick little ending video part of this so you can kind of see what that format circuit is. It's just another word for control in this case. Um, and that's kind of how it works. But anyways, like I said, I'll have a video once I'm finished with this thing so you guys can actually see this thing as a complete unit and I'll go over this, of course, once again. Just not in a technical aspect, but more as a, as a musical instrument aspect. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.